We've got the 2021 Corvette Stingray in RC form, and it sports all the scale details of the real mid-engine supercar in one 10 scale form. So today, we're gonna go over the new car, the scale Corvette body, and the updated Fortec 3.0 chassis that sits underneath it. So how cool is the new Corvette Stingray? Well, let's find out. The new 2021 Corvette Stingray is a wild car with nearly 500 horsepower and almost a 200 mile an hour top speed. And for you RC fans, you can now have an officially licensed scale version for a fraction of the price. The RC version is offered in four pre-painted body colors and they all come ready to run. So they're pre-assembled with electronics and the body is detailed and painted right out of the box. Now there are two items required to operate the car. First, the included TQ transmitter requires four AA batteries. And second, the vehicle itself requires a battery pack with 2S LiPo compatibility or nickel metal hydride. Now, when we first got the car out of the box, it was covered in a protective film to keep the replica Corvette body looking new. The body is mainly made from Lexan material, which is painted, decaled, and finished with hard plastic scale details. The front grille and headlight section is a good example of these details, and even though LED lights are not included, these headlights are ready for you to add your own. Or you can pick up the Traxxas LED light kit sold separately. The plastic side mirrors are another nice touch to the body and they feature reflective decals. On the windows, you'll notice up front they're completely blacked out with the use of decals. And on the windshield, they provide our wipers. It's pretty hard to miss, but these massive side intakes are another scale bolt-on that look great on this body. There aren't actually any body openings behind here, but they do look pretty good. The next big scale detail on this body is perhaps the coolest, and it's the recreated engine bay on full display for all to see intended to be under glass. Although it's just clear Lexan and not glass, you get a good look at the decals and scale accessories used to display the 16 valve V8 engine. Now if we follow our racing stripes down the back of the car, the Corvette Stingray uses a hard plastic spoiler and more realistic details to finish up the rear end, like our stylish taillights. These are just like the front, where they're LED light ready, but you'll need to supply those yourself if you want lighting. One of the coolest RC aspects to this body is the use of the new Traxxas quick release body system that uses hidden plastic clips underneath the body to secure it to the chassis. This small but important detail gets rid of the visible body clips that normally rest on the top side of the body and it gives the Stingray the clean and realistic look it deserves. There is a second element to this quick release system and that's how fast it is to use. Need a quick release for life? Well, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, if we flip the car over, you see one clip in the front bumper and the second clip in the rear end. When you're ready to remove the body, you just reach under there and pinch each clip and lift it up. To install the body on the chassis, you just align it up, push it down and clip it in. That's it. Now with the body off, we get a good look at some of the work behind the scenes here with our front and rear light pods for your own LED lighting. And you also get a good look at the clipless body system and how it's mounted to the body. You can also see the bottom of the engine bay and it's sealed up from the underside, but you can access it if you want to customize the engine details. After driving in some really dusty and dirty conditions, we found out the engine bay is not dust proof, but with a little tinkering, it's possible to improve this. Moving on. Let's check out the new Fortec 3.0 chassis, which looks a lot like your standard four-wheel drive touring car, but it has no traditional body mounts. Instead, our front clipless system is integrated into the front bumper mount, and the rear mount floats behind the rear shock tower. The remaining configuration in the chassis is pretty standard with a low center of gravity mid-motor layout. We have independent front and rear suspension, front and rear gear differentials, oil-filled shocks, and a steel center drive shaft. This drive shaft is also bearing supported, so it'll run straight and true at a high RPM driving. For the remaining drive shafts, the Fortec 3.0 uses a one-piece steel drive shaft at each corner. For the electronics, we have a Traxxas 7075 waterproof steering servo and it features an adjustable servo saver, which is a really nice feature and it'd be great to see this integrated into more Traxxas off-road vehicles. We also have a micro receiver protected inside this waterproof receiver box. The ESC included is the XL5 brushed ESC with a max LiPo limit of two cell and it uses a Traxxas ID battery connector. 
The motor power is supplied by a Traxxas 12 turn 550 sized can motor and it uses a fixed gear mesh system that's pretty easy to use. If you remove the four screws holding on the spur gear cap, it comes right off freeing up the motor. This fixed gear mesh system only works with the included 72 tooth spur gear and it will accommodate a pinion gear range between 17 and 27 tooth. Included and installed on the vehicle is an 18 tooth pinion gear, which is ideal for your everyday driving. But how fast is it? Well, we tested this gearing with our fully charged Traxxas 2 cell LiPo, driving back and forth on open road, and after a few passes, we were able to reach a top speed of 22 miles per hour. For extra speed, Traxxas includes a second pinion gear. It's a larger 22 tooth, but this gearing is too tall for everyday driving and it's only to be used for testing top speeds. So to test it out, we installed that 22 tooth pinion on our car, recharged our battery and tried again. This time we achieved 28 miles per hour. Without using faster and more powerful brushless electronics, the car can only go so fast. Although it is designed to withstand, a lot more straight line speed. Now here's a comparison with the older Fortec 2.0 on the left and our new 3.0 on the right. And it's pretty clear, the new 3.0 is a lot longer. The configuration inside the cars and the parts used throughout is pretty much close to identical though. Here's one more comparison with the 3.0 on the left, a Phaser MK2 in the center, and all the way on the right is a proper competitive touring car. It's not a surprise that the Phaser in the center is shorter than the Fortec 3.0, but surprise, surprise, the proper race car is a little bit shorter than the Phaser MK2. Now, shorter wheelbase cars tend to have more steering agility and nimbleness, and they're great with twisty turning environments like a racing circuit. But on the other hand, longer wheelbase vehicles tend to be more stable and comfortable, especially at higher speeds, which makes them great as speedrun cars. Now to make this even more true with the new Fortec 3.0, Traxxas went ahead and gave the Stingray all new tires and wheels that are a larger diameter than the original, or any other touring car tire for that matter. These tires are not only extended taller in diameter, but they're wider, effectively widening the stance and increasing stability. This makes the Fortec 3.0 not only longer than the 2.0, but also wider. One thing to consider when using a specialty size tire and wheel is that although aftermarket touring car tires and wheels will work on here, as long as they have a 12 millimeter hex, they're gonna be a smaller size, which could be an issue. Aside from the obvious look difference of using a shorter tire, Using shorter tires is like gearing down on the motor pinion and effectively produces less top speed, but more initial torque. You could counter this by just gearing up on the pinion gear when using smaller tires, so it's not really an issue, it's just something to be mindful of. So the Fortec 3.0 uses a stretched chassis. It uses oversized tires and wheels. It uses a metal drive shaft. It seems set up and configured, for some big power fun. The included electronics are great for somebody starting out and building their skills, but for those looking to take things to level 11, the car is ready to rip if you wanna put brushless electronics in it. Maybe Traxxas will provide a VXL version down the road, but it's hard to say. For now, we had a great time with the Corvette Stingray out in the parking lot, just ripping it up and down the road the way it is. Since we primarily drive off-road vehicles here, the on-road car was really refreshing, and it just has sharp and precise steering that no off-road car can match. And cleaning out a parking lot and laying down some pipe or some boards to do some parking lot racing would be a blast. After all the driving we did, we had no issues with the car or the body, and we broke no parts. We hit a few curbs, and the body has a little rash on it, but it's pretty minimal. The worst thing we can say about the car is dust got into the engine bay, but I'll probably add a little silicone bead around the edge to seal that up, although that silicone may have a chance of pulling up the paint if you ever remove that engine bay later. But overall, the Corvette Steamray is a cool little car with good looks and a great body fastening system. It would be really awesome if we were able to add a high powered brushless system to the car and just see how fast it would go, but maybe we'll save that for another day. Guys, you can check out the new Corvette Stingray from Traxxas by following our links down below or check out these videos for more RC.